I just want to I, I just want to hear from you this morning. Can I have a mic, please? Get the mic ready. Okay, I want to know if we are preaching, then I must do some assessment whether you are hearing what I'm saying. Amen. So I'm going to put, uh, who has the link, the video link that I sent at LDRS? Yes, yeah, send it to Caleb. Can we have it live here? I want to show you how the Holy Spirit speaks. And then to see how many people are paying attention. Are you following? Yeah. And for those of you who are less than three years in this house, anybody less than three years? One, two, three. less than three years. All right. This message was spoken on 21st of September 2021. You have the whole video. Can you put the video up and let this video also go live? Because many people who come to this house. They don't take time to go back and listen to what was spoken before. The right attitude. If let's say you join a company, <clears throat> you must know where the company started, how it began, what is their core values, what is their belief. Am I right? That is the right thing to do. Andrew, you work in, in a bank. You must know the bank's history. You must know who are the founders. You must know what is their core values. What do they believe? Every bank has their different belief. Rachel, you worked in bank before. Am I right? Each bank carries a different culture, different belief, different core, core values. So if you are working in a company, you must take some time to go back and understand what are the core values of the company. Am I right? Come on, talk to me this morning. So if God has brought you to a church, to a house where you are going to grow, you are not here for temporary we are here for a long haul. I say we are here for a long haul. We want to see our first generation, second generation, and the third generation grow. You must have a five years forecast. Ten years forecast. Twenty years forecast. Amen? You must know if you should go, what will happen to your children? Hey, you and I cannot live forever and ever. Even though Iron Man have to die. <laughs> even though he was... Uh, even Iron, Iron Man have to die, even though he was... Uh, whatever it is. <laughs> he still have to die. They have to finish the series. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what, is his, what is his name? The Tony, Stark. Tony Stark. I know many of you love him. Yeah. <laughs> Put a light in the middle here. You see? Lovers of Tony Stark is here. Yeah. But you see, even... When, that, when he was dying, I was sleeping in the theater. That's the truth. <laughs> and my children don't like it. <laughs> I was so tired. I followed them to watch the show. It was a long one. Two hours, I think. Three hours. Uh. It was a long one. I, I was excited about the whole thing. And then it was so comfortable. The theater was so comfortable. And in the cool of the day, I slept. <laughs> Especially when Tony was dying. Then I said, what happened? <laughs> He said, Dad, what happened to you? <laughs> I was taken, <laughs> because it's so comfortable, you know? So I'm sorry. But I, I, want you, I want you to listen to this message. You see, once in a while, I'll go back to the archive file and to hear what the Holy Spirit has spoken through my mouth. Because I need to build on what he has said before. So that's what I do. I go back to listen to what Papa has preached before long ago. What Dr. Jo uh, uh, Pastor B, Doc, Doc, Dr. Bakari has preached before. To listen back and chart the course. What the Holy Spirit has said before. He's saying it now. He's saying it to the future. Amen. Amen. So for those of you who don't really know myself. And you come and you, you see him. You see me preaching strong last couple of uh, months or this whole year. I've been preaching very strong. I've been preaching very strong. So some of you think... That I am angry. Yeah, I am angry. I'm angry because you don't hear. I'm angry because you don't hear and you don't understand what I'm trying to say. 
So you, many of us take the things out of context and start talking nonsense. And what happens? It is to your loss. Not me. We will continue. This ministry will continue as long as I'm alive. So to your loss, I fear for you. I fear for people who don't understand. The, the pure doctrine is one of the, one of the primary assignments of my father in the faith, Dr. Jonathan David, is to bring back pure doctrine to the body of Christ. Amen. That's why God met him in the 70s. Gave him the, gave him the vision how the doctrines are going to be restored. So if I'm one of his sons, I need to fight this until I finish. If not, people will play church. So I was, I was going back to looking at the archive file, even though some of our archive file like 10 years ago was hacked. Remember, Caleb, our old YouTube was hacked and YouTube will not be responsible. We cannot find it anymore. But the failure on our side is we, we didn't archive it in our hard disk, I think. So now we have bought a tera, tera byte, tera, one tera or five tera, I don't know how many teras now. We want to archive all of that and we want to make it available for those who are coming new. You must go back to listen to what has been said. You, you know, you have to go and look at the title, what has been preached before. So the title of this is How to Expose the Schemes of the Enemy. Amen. This was spoken in 20. 21 September. And David in Kazea also in that in that meeting and looks like you're wearing the almost the same shirt. No. <laughs> I was tempted to wear this shirt. But I thought, okay, never mind. So I want you to hear, I want you to hear and identify three years ago the Holy Spirit was using my mouth to say some things. So People who come a year ago, two years ago, or this, those who've been here more than that, when they start to hear this, they always connect it with what they want to connect. But they do not know, I've been talking about this long ago. So welcome to the builder and maker is God himself. So thank God that God uses my vocal cord to say some things. So pay attention to everything you hear. It's the reason why I'm putting this, this short clip here. After that, I'll continue on preaching. So I want you to hear this. Okay, let's start. Here I come. The title of today's message is The Clash of the Kingdom and how are we going to expose the schemes of the enemy? Are you ready to expose? You better be on my side if you're going to fight this battle together. Amen? If you don't understand, ask me. Talk to me in the course of the day. Find out. You can always call me. My line is always available. Dad, you said something on Sunday I didn't quite understand. Please, talk to your shepherd. Don't talk to strangers. Don't discuss it with somewhere, someone who didn't hear in a proper contextual point. They will tell you, ah, this man like this. Talk to the man who delivered the word. I can explain to you from scripture. I will tell you why I said what I'm saying. So I have a contemplation that I want to read this morning before I take you to the core of my message. The contemplation is from 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 2 to 4. Oh, where is it? Maybe 2 Corinthians 11, 1 to 15, TPT. Paul wrote it like this. I'm going to read it because when I read Paul's writing, I feel myself inside there. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1 to 15. Pay attention everyone. Do not skip this message. If you, are, if, you are, if you are tired, stand up wherever you are. Don't skip. Because if you skip, then you won't know what I'm talking about. It is so dangerous to hear half-truth. It is so dangerous to hear half-truth. You must hear full truth. In totality, why I'm saying. Are you getting this? You know, sometimes when you go to my YouTube, and then if you just crawl through and you hear halfway, it's very dangerous. I may be saying something that may be quite strong. And you didn't hear in what contextual point that I've said it. Many times Pastor B also taken out of context like this. Many times Papa also taken out of context like this. Because people like to scroll and listen to some point. They don't hear in totality what the man is saying. In what contextual point is he saying? Are you, are you getting this? So please pay attention. I beg you by the mercies of God... 
pay attention to what I'm saying in proper contextual point. Amen? So I'm going to read out to you from TPT, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1 to 15. Now, please bear with some of my craziness. So, when you read this, take it as a personal letter from me, because Paul, my brother, is writing. Amen? What you saw just now is my craziness. Because I am I'm a fighter of God's word. And I hate any error in the spirit world. It messes me up crazy. Mom knows me. Any error in the spirit world, especially in doctrine, oh, I cannot. my lion will come out. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1 to 15. Now please bear with me with some of my craziness for a moment. Okay, can you bear with my craziness? Let's read. Yes, please be patient with me. Can you be patient with me? Amen. You need to know that God's passion is burning inside me for you. Why I speak the way I speak just now? Because there's a passion of God on the inside of me burning for you. Why do you think Papa is pushing like that every Tuesday? You think he got nothing to do? Huh? You know, we as his sons, and we want him to rest. We're trying many ways and means. Trying to just, that, just relax. But he won't stop. Until he get his job done. Because there's a passion on the inside, burning inside for you. That's us. That's my life. That's how I use this. The letter of Paul speaks me. As how we are. You need to know. That's why I say this thing is my first contemplation. Because I want to show you why Satan hates this. And how are we going to dismantle the schemes of the enemy? Are you getting this? So pay attention. Whatever you're doing, pay attention. Please, 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 please pay attention. You need to know that God's passion is burning inside me for you. Because like a loving father. I'm speaking to you like a loving father. Like a loving father, I have pledged your hand in marriage to Christ. I pledge what? I pledge my hand. David and Kazir, come here. Stand in front. I pledge your hand in marriage to Christ. Imagine this is, come up here, come up here. You're going to get married again. David, you go this side. This is the church. This is the church. The one that God raised as a, as a prophet, as a shepherd. My job is to make sure the bride is ready for the groom. And what do I do? I... I what I take you I have pledged your hand in marriage to Christ. Can you see the can you see the picture? The prophet's voice, the prophet's job, the shepherd's job is to pledge the church her hand and bring her into holy matrimony with Christ. That's why in the book of Revelation it say, let the bride let the bride say, let the groom say, come to the bride. The Holy Spirit is saying, bring the bride closer to me. That's the church. Thank you. Give them a hand. Sometimes it's good to see visual. Am I preaching a new message today? I'm still preaching the same thing. What I preached three years ago. So if somebody tell you that has changed, don't believe these lies. I don't change. 
my quest is to bring back doctrine into the house. Because the devil is a liar. He's been lying to people that it is okay, God loves you. You can live anyhow, however you want, you know. Don't go to this church because he's strong. He's controlling you. Go to some place where it's between you and God. You will see soon. The shaking is coming to the body of Christ. You will know what foundation are you built on. Because a storm is coming. I am not messing around, with mixing words, you know, uh, just to make you happy. I told you many times, the doctrine we carry, many places, many parts of the world, they don't have this. Yeah. When I went to Cambodia to preach, same thing. All hell broke loose. That's why I stopped going there. Because I cannot find one man. I cannot find one, one man that is so hungry for what we carry. Contamination everywhere. Went to Africa, the same. Contamination everywhere. Are you listening to me? Yeah. People want to hear messages that, you know, God bless you, God love you, you know, plaster you, powder you, butter you, and go a bit stronger, or pastor don't love us anymore. But the letter of Paul, give me that scripture again. The letter of Paul, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, chapter 11, verse 1, in TPT, it is so crystal clear. Paul's job is to present the bride to the groom in holy matrimony. Are you following me? Yes. Now, please bear with some of my craziness. So if you think I'm crazy, Paul was. <laughs> yeah. 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 For a moment. Yes, please be patient with me. So we have to build patiently. The work that we are building takes time. I said to you many times, to bring people to Christ is easy. But to form Christ, it takes a lifetime. It takes a life out to be able to build and raise another man to become like you. Hours of building, impartation, input, adjusting, rebuking, correcting, until everything about your life is completely aligned. Then we can present this as a Pure bride to the groom. So, verse 2. You need to know that God's passion is burning inside me. So every Sunday when I'm preaching, I'm preaching with passion. You must also carry the same passion. You must also carry the same conviction. Same passion, same conviction must be upon you. If not, whatever I'm giving to you, when you talk to people, you don't have the conviction. Yeah. You cannot influence anyone. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, this is what dad said. Like. No, it's not what dad said. You must believe. Yeah. Yeah. It must become your passion. Yeah. It must become part of your life. Yeah. So when you're talking to somebody and, and help them understand, you are talking with the same intensity. Yeah. Are you following me? Yes. You talk with the same intensity, same passion. Right, yeah, right. I was preaching in, in, in um, Pastor Atabani's church many years ago in Penang. Took a bus there to, to preach and then took a bus back. You remember? I took a bus. I didn't drive. Just quite recently, after we gave them the, our old chair, the blue color chair, went to the church. I was preaching house on fire. It was two sessions I did. One of a very old lady in the church came to me and said, you sound exactly like Dr. Jonathan David. I say, yeah, he's my father. I cannot sound like anybody else. <laughs> because she used to hear him in the early days. She said, you sounded exactly like Dr. Jonathan David. I said, Dad, that's my father. Of course I have to sound like him. The same passion. The same intensity. The same understanding. The same blueprint, yeah. the same conviction yeah. must be upon your life. Yeah. So when you minister to people, they know this is coming from somewhere. That's right. yeah. When David killed Goliath, Saul asked, whose son is this? Yeah. 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 Do you remember? Yeah. 
This is what legacy is all about. This is the legacy of faith we are talking about. The legacy must continue. The passion must continue. The intensity must continue. The conviction must continue. So Paul is saying, there's a burning passion on the inside of me for you. Like what? Like a loving father. I have pledged your hand. And I explain and I give you illustration with David and Kezia. Saw how the minister's job, the prophetic man's job, is to bring the bride to the groom. So he said, I pledge your hand in marriage to Christ. Christ is what? The church. That's why when you come and join the church, you are not joining to some clubhouse. You are joining to the body of Christ. That's been bought and purchased with his own blood. Today, I'm going to show you the spirit of Cain, the arrow of Cain, if time permits, and how the seat of Cain operates. If you are ready. Are you ready? You sure? So I'll continue on from last week and then we take it to the next level. Maybe next Sunday is our church anniversary time together. Actually, church anniversary is on the 17th October. So next Sunday, their team is planning on something. Either a pot bless or what. I leave it to them. They are all organizing. So next Sunday, do not miss church. Amen. Make sure you are here. We want to give thanks to God for 31 years of unmerited favor. Amen. 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 So we want to thank God. We are supposed to do this in the new building. But it doesn't matter. New people is for new building. Amen. We cannot go to a new building with the old people, with the old mindset. So God is to change your mindset. Give you a clear understanding. That's why there's a delay. It doesn't matter. So when we go there, we can all celebrate together. And the spirit that we carry is going to be different. That's what I believe. So every one of you will understand, you know, in totality what we are building. And, and I have news for you. You are part of the 120. You're not excited. I say you are part of the 120. That God spoke to us many years ago. There will be 120 strong, solid believers. Like in the book of Acts. So you are part of them. So here, I pledge your hand in marriage to Christ. Your your true bridegroom. I've also promised that I would present his fiancée to him as a pure virgin bride. You can see there, I pledge your hand in marriage to Christ. That's the church. Are you there? And bridegroom, the head. Jesus, the head. I also promise, I would, I also promise that I would present his fiancée. Is there? The fiancée is there. And a pure virgin bride. The church must become pure. And must be virgin bride uncontaminated yes. not drinking from everywhere getting contaminated doctrine yes. that's why it's called the pure virgin bright yes. may the Lord present you pure before God before he's coming again amen so that's the reason why I showed you this message just to show you that I am not preaching something new this is three years ago anyways I have a question for you food for your thought of all these things that you are hearing, if let's say your understanding is futile, what do you think will happen to you? Get a mic, please. I want to hear from different ones. If let's say your understanding is futile, how will you translate what I'm saying? Go on. Sarah. We will um, operate in, on our own uh, understanding. So, certain things when it comes to us, we will doubt. We will doubt, doubt the preacher, doubt uh, the word, and we will go on our own way. Yep. Okay. Based on what she said, 
I'm going to ask another person. Based on what Sarah said, what did she say? You'll go on your own way. You go, you doubt the preacher with your own understanding. The second question is a bit tougher. I'm looking. <laughs> Who can handle this? All right. Kazia. Let's give it to Kazia. All right. Kazia. Based on what Sarah said, why do you think, why do you think that, ha that even happens in the first place? Let's analyze. Okay, according to Sarah, she said, if you don't have the same understanding, you'll go in your own way. You'll start to doubt the preacher. You'll, you'll start to doubt the word. In the first place, why does this thing even happen? All yours. They're not seeing the... God of the, I mean, the God of the Father, meaning that uh, you're preaching in the spirit, right, Dad? Okay. So, they are saying things in the natural. Okay. They're not capturing it. According to Kezia, uh, what is being spoken in the spirit is now caught in the natural. Uh, Am so I right? The flesh is manifesting. The flesh is manifesting. Okay, so good. they take you out of context. So you take out of context. All right, so now she has added on something on what Sarah said. The third one is going to be a bit harder. Okay, thank you. Third one. Let me find some men. Okay, give it to James. <laughs> Why are you all so happy for James? <laughs> okay, James. Why in the first place... The flesh is even there. <laughs> According to Kazia, what she said, doubting the man, doubting the word, and go your own way. And Kazia said, the man is speaking in the spirit, but the person, the hearer, is catching it in the flesh. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. So that's why that's happening. My question to you is why the flesh is still even there? What do you think has not happened? I think uh, he has not known the God of the Father. You are repeating the same thing? Yeah. No. I want you to analyze why the flesh is still there. Still alive. Still alive. We go back to Dash message <laughs> when she came to church long ago. During in one of the goal. What did she say? Die. When you die, die properly. If she's listening online, I'm sure she'll laugh, be laughing there. She came up here and, and shared. When you die, must die properly. Which is true. That means the flesh is still there because the process of dying is not complete. Amen. Though we say that we have given our life to Jesus. It's cliche only. Mouth speaks only. But we have not, in action, in reality, we have not really laid down our life. Mouth say only. I will be with you. How far? Is a question. You are still with me, 100 miles away. You are not together. Am I right? That means, the, according to her, one in the spirit, another one in the flesh. My question to you is, why in the first place the flesh is still around? Meaning, the person didn't really completely surrender his or her life. Anything else to add? I think uh, the person will take it lightly. Then he will think like, you're speaking to others, not to me. Okay, that's a good one. Oh, I'm okay. This message is for Elvin. <laughs> Elvin is a problem. I'm okay. This is also another attitude when we come to church. We think that this message is for Joseph because he got beard. 
I don't have beard. We always like to take this and think that this word is for somebody else. Good one. Thank you, James. So, why we operate this way? And this is where I'm going to take the message on today because I'll show you how the seat operates. Are you ready? And to go there, we must go and find out what type of seat are there. Genesis chapter 13, verse 14 to 18. Let's read. And the Lord said to Abraham, this time Abraham name also haven't changed. Abram. The Lord said to who? Abram or Abram. James, what's your Chinese name? Because I do not know the Kenseng of old. I only know James. Right now. So, God is speaking to Kenseng <laughs> of the old. <laughs> Haven't died yet. Kenseng. <laughs> After Lord has separated from him. Your father is not here. Otherwise, you'll be laughing. Lift up your eyes now and look from the place where you are. Northward, southward, eastward, and westward. For all the land which you see, I give to you and your descendants forever. Correct? All that you can see, I will give it to you and your descendants forever. If God is saying like this, uh, it's a perpetual thing. You, do, you cannot argue. It is spoken. It is a decree. I will give you and your descendants forever. Then he said, I will make your descendants as the dust of the earth. Are you there? So that if a man could number the dust of the earth, then your descendants also could be numbered. So that's where the dust seed come from. Because God said, out of this old Abram, dust will come forth. That's the old Abram. That means old Kenseng. Not changed yet. But God has spoken. Let's look at chapter 15. Verse 1 to 6. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abraham again. In a vision. Do not be afraid. I am your shield. Your exceedingly great reward. Are you there? He didn't say that in, in, in chapter 13. Because he has not met Melchizedek yet. Are you following me? Yes. But when he met Melchizedek, he added on some more. This is why when you come to church, you cannot understand the message that's been preached in one Sunday. You need to have God encounter. You need to have God encounter. You cannot say, I've been attending the church, I know it all. There is no such thing. Is precept upon precept, line upon line. God is adding on, adding on, adding on, adding on. There's an impartation over your life. What do you understand last Sunday and what are you going to understand today is different. Don't think that, oh, that preacher did last Sunday. No, what I'm going to present to you today requires a different kind of experience and encounter. This is how you can grow spiritually. I'm giving you keys. If your attitude is, I've heard it before last Sunday, there he preaching again. You are not going to grow. You, you will just stop there and you are going to die in that place like how Terah died. And that place became Haran. Remember, Terah didn't die in Haran. He died in his native land. Sorry, Haran didn't die. Hi, Haran died, didn't die in Haran, that place. 
the place became Haran because it was Terah who carried this in his heart. He couldn't forget the grief. And he carried on with this baggage. And he came to the place and named the place Haran. Are you following me? So there are baggages that you carry. So every time God gives you an encounter is to take that out so that you receive something new. Are you following me? Please stay strong. So every time when you have God encounter, you cannot connect to Him in the way you connected last Sunday. You cannot say, I heard this message before. If you do that, what you are telling God is, I'm going to stop here. If somebody asks you, are you a Methodist? You say, yes, I'm a Methodist. It means you have just stopped there. Are you Anglican? Uh, I'm Anglican. Uh, are you KACC? I'm KCC. No. KCC is just a name here. Yeah. There is more. Yeah. We are only using KACC as an identity for us to operate as far as in the natural. Yeah. But we are all the child of the living God. And I've given you the identity some weeks ago. I talked to you that we are royal priesthood. Holy nation. I was joking with Eliezer yesterday, two days ago. Where is he? He was having a company dinner. It was a fine dine. Fine dine dinner. So he was eating so well. So his colleague asked him, Wow, you eat so well, huh? you, you, you go fine dine many times. Huh? He said, no. The way do you learn this? Search and learn. Uh, I said, because you must know which, which cutlery for what. No, you cannot let's poke like that and, <laughs> and eat. You know. Am I right? Sharvin, you, you, you are good at this kind of stuff. You go to different fine dining place. There's a certain things you cannot use. At, and people look at you and say, are you okay? This guy must be from estate, you know. <laughs> you know, people watch these things. So his colleague saw him say, you know how to, to use which one, what, what, what. I say, you missed the best part. Say what? I say, you missed the best part to say that I come from a royal priesthood family. I say, you miss it, man. I say, if I were you, I would have preached to the whole table. <laughs> this was my message to Elias. I say, you miss it. I say, God is giving you an opportunity, man. They're looking at you. The whole group of them asking, you know, how come you, you went to so many places, uh, you find dinners, how do how you know which cutlery to use? I'm sure Marion has been trained too. Working at, as an uh, air stewardess, I'm sure you're trained which cutlery for what. You know what I'm saying? So these are training. So this is the best time to open your mouth and say, according to the scripture, <laughs> I'm a born again, my God is a king. And I'm a son of a king. So I know how to behave. Come on. Are you not a son of a king? I think it was God who spoke to you about dress, dress like, what, what is the exact word? Dress like, no, no, no. God spoke to mom about, uh, God asked, who are you? And then, Mom's answers, I'm a daughter of a most high king. And the next answer, God will say, behave as one. Act as one. Are you following me? Yes. So, if you are the dust seed, then you operate like a, the dust seed. But here God said, do not be afraid. I'm your shield, your exceedingly great reward. Then he said, Abraham said, Lord, God, what will you give me? Seeing I go childless. Earlier he spoke to him that your generation will be like a dust. So I, I, I believe he kept it in his heart. I don't even have a child. How is it my generation is going to be like a dust? So some days later, years later, God showed up again. Came to him. This is after the, the fight. You're trying to deliver Lot, his nephew. Are you following me? Yeah. After all the mess that he went through, and then you have the allies. Um, in chapter 14, verse 24, he mentioned their name. Anur, Eshkol, Mamri. Mamri, let them take their portion. 
And you know he went to meet the kings at the valley of the kings. So what do you think Abraham's position was? King-like. He has not become king yet. King-like. Because he's a merchandiser, remember? Hello. He got some money. He want to prove himself to be seen among the cliques and the company out there. Some people, they want to be seen, but they have not become yet. Some people buy the things they don't need to impress the people they don't like with the money they don't have. Can I repeat this again? Some people like to buy the things they don't need to impress the people they don't like with the money they don't have. I pray that you must not live like this. <laughs> That's not for you. You don't have to buy the things that you don't need to impress the people that actually you don't like them. But with the money that you don't have, you now have to leave the kind of click show that I'm somebody. To show off or to identify yourself. You don't have to do that. David, you will know this story. The tiara I was driving. Remember? I sold two machines in one house with an old junk tiara that I had at that time. I drove the car in Satya Alam and parked it in front of the house. And that guy got Range Rover. And here I come with 7,500 ringgit machine. That time was 7,500. I, two, I brought, brought it in and walked out of the house, sold two machines to that person. It's not what you're driving and who is driving you. It's not what you're driving that is going to impress people. Who is driving you on the inside? How you carry yourself. I know in the people in the world, they look at the car you drive. Yes, I am not disagreeing to that. If you are in the sales line, there's a certain car you drive. Actually represent yourself. But you see, I'm not there to recruit him one. So who cares? <laughs> if my mind is to recruit him to come and join the business, that's why I never opened that part of recruitment in that particular house. I didn't say come and join Rainbow. I'm here to sell and I'm going off. <laughs> So I remember, I didn't try to recruit him to the business. Because if I try to recruit him, then I'll be in trouble. Then he'll say, why are you driving this car? You want to recruit me, are you? you're not doing very well. This is how people relate with you. Are you following me? So here Abraham went down with his friends. And there is called Mamre. And these guys are allies. If you read NASB in the middle column, it talks about alliance. These are allies. Who are these people? We don't know. But they are men of certain stature. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Who went and fought with Abraham to, to deliver Lord. So that means this man has some influence. Yeah. 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 Talk to me. Yeah. But you see, his journey didn't stop there. God is working behind the scenes. So I'm going to take a bit of time to explain to you before I take you, if you've got time, to the seat of Cain, spirit of Cain, and the error of Cain. I don't think so I can finish this. It's fully loaded. Are you there? So you find that here in chapter 15, God comes down again after the meeting of the king of Salem. Chapter 14, verse 18. Follow me, please. Machus, the king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was the priest of the Most High God. Book of Hebrews explains about this priesthood in detail. You can read that in chapter 7, verse 1 to 10. I'll go there in a short while. Blessed be Abraham of God Most High, possessor of heaven and earth, and blessed be God Most High, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. So there was an encounter with this God High, Most High God. Are you following me? And that encounter added something into Abraham. Before that, he was called to carry generation like dust. But once he had this encounter, something else happened. Yeah. Are you following me? Yeah. I'm explaining to you so you pay attention. Lord God will give you 
Go back to chapter 15, verse 2. But Abraham said, Lord God, what will you give me? Seeing I go childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of, of Damascus. Then Abraham said, Look, you have given me no offspring. Indeed, one born in my house is my heir. Do you know all of them were born in his house? Do you know those servants who went for war are also called born in his house? Are you all following this? Come on, church. Okay, let's look at what God said. All right, let's look at this. Chapter 14, verse 14. Let's read. Now, when Abraham heard that his brother was taken captive... He armed his 318 trained, what? Servants. Servants here become soldiers. They are only servants. Huh? They are all shepherd boys. They, are never, they were never trained to go for war. Who were born in his own household. Come on. These were servants, but it says they were born in his house. So when you come to church, right, you need to find out whether I'm born into this house or I'm still staying as an adopted child, not knowing my identity. Come on, talk to me. You must take time to pray and ask God, Lord, if I'm born into this house, then I need to know my primary assignment. I need to know why God brought me here. What is my role? What I'm going to do, then when you discover that, you know what's going to happen. God will use you mightily to touch many lives. Then your Christian life will not be plateauing, you know. Not going anywhere. You will not feel bored. It will be exciting and exciting and exciting. Why? Because the impartation you receive, now you receive it in your life. You begin to touch other people's life. These were born in his house, am I right? So Abraham said, look, I don't have any air in my house. All these guys that I have are born in my house. They are all servants. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him saying, This one shall not be your heir, but one who will come from your own body shall be your heir. Then he brought him outside. Ah, this is what happens. He brought him where? Outside and said, Look now toward heaven. And count the stars, if you are able to number them. This is where the star seeds are come, came in. So, in chapter 13, he said, in verse 16, dust of the earth. In chapter 15, in verse number 6, he now points to Abraham and said, Your generation, your descendants will be like star. Yeah. Say after me, I'm a rising star. I'm a rising star. In the house. Your children will become rising stars. Amen. And there will be a shining star later. Amen. Every rising star must become a shining star. Amen. The star that rises up must begin to shine. Amen. Are you following me? Amen. Let's continue. So here he showed him about a star. And look at chapter 15 also in verse, sorry, chapter 22. Look at verse 15. This is chapter 22, right? This is another level. Are you following me? This is after Abraham's name is changed to Abraham. Remember Isaac was born after his name was changed. Ishmael was born when he was still Abraham. Isaac was born after God circumcised him. And his name was changed. His nature was changed. Now Isaac came out of him and said out. In chapter 22, he tested him. And that's when his faith was confirmed. Every relationship, every encounter you go through with God will be tested. There is no test. There is, sorry, there is no progress without process. You cannot be taken until you are tried. Say after me, God must try me. Then only, then only he can take me. Tested, tried, taken. Tested, tried, taken. Say after me, tested, tested tried, tried, 
taken for his glory. You will be tested. You will be tried. Then only God can take you. Test and try is two different things. Are you following me? So after the test in chapter 22, here he comes and meets him again in verse 15. Then the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time out of heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done these things and have not withheld your son, your only son, blessings I will bless you and multiplying I will multiply your descendants. As what? As the stars of the heavens. Are you following me? As what? Stars of the heaven. In chapter 15, verse 5, he didn't say stars of heaven. Are you following me? He only said count the stars. Are you following me? Come on, stay. You see, uh, every encounter takes you an to another level. Anytime you have got an encounter, is to take you higher. So in chapter 15, he said, count the stars. And he just left it there. Because his nature, his name has not changed. He's still the old Abraham. God cannot tell him that these are stars of heaven. Come on. But in chapter 22, verse 17, now he comes to reinstate again. He said, I will multiply your descendants as the stars of heaven. Then he said, as the sand which on the seashore and your descendants shall possess the gate of their enemies. And last week I told you when Re Rebecca was leaving the house, his family spoke the same thing. That the enemy would be met at the gate. When Jesus opened up Matthew, he said, I'm giving you the keys of heaven, the kingdom of heaven, and to do what? The gates of hell will prevail against it and you will shut down the gates. So we are the, we are the rising star, shining star, and a star that will rise up to put an end to the works of the enemy. Amen. Now I have a question before I continue. Are you a rising star? Or a shining star? Are you a dust? Or you a sand? You have to determine. Okay, how to know? Faith, how to know you are a rising star? How to know your children are the rising star? Or a shining star? Faith, how to know? How will you identify? The dealings of God in your life, you know how to know? Very easy. If my children do not embrace and testify, it is truly God's dealing in your life and they can bear witness. They have not caught the vision. They only want to enjoy the blessing. They don't want to enjoy the dealings of God in your life. Something has gone wrong somewhere. If you raise a child, and the child is only interested in blessing. The child is not interest, interested in knowing what you have become. Like um, your first son, Jeremiah, thought that it was your picture. <laughs> but it was you. I knew it, but I don't say. She posted a picture. Jeremiah looked exactly like the daddy. When you, so you say, when he was this taken? <laughs> you know why? Every father's desire is for the child to become like him. When I was 40 years old, I prayed one prayer when I was reaching my 40th birthday. I came down, I sat at the table. I said, God, do not multiply the dealings that are still working in my life. Do not multiply it. Help me only multiply what you have already completed in me. Amen. That was my prayer at the age 40. I say, I don't want to multiply work in progress in my life. Because if I multiply work in progress in my life, and then my 
I have just multiplied something that is not complete. I only want to multiply what you have done in my life so that I can transfer it to my children. I can transfer obedience. I can transfer explicit obedience. I can transfer faith. I can transfer giving. I can transfer, uh, uh, what do you call that? Uh, serving, serving uh, what do you call that? Without looking for anything. Selfless, sacrificial living. That's why Eliezer had a privilege to serve the man of God together with me, hand in hand. It all happened just like that. We didn't even plan this. We were talking, suddenly, you know, his name was mentioned, and then, pam, he was brought in. Then you had the privilege to also serve together during the conference. How, why God give you the privilege like this? is to show you that whatever your father is building, you can build together. Amen. Now, when your children see this, what, will, what do you think Sammy will, will think? Oh, this is how we serve God. This is how we serve the man of God. This is how we serve together as a family. So the legacy will continue. In the days to come, Samuel will remember. This is how we must serve the man of God. This is how we must honor. This is how we must be self selfless. This is how we must live a sacrificial life. Everything we do can be modeled. Is this a bad thing? Are you worshipping the man? Just for your info. Are you worshipping the man? No, you're not worshipping me. I don't want anybody to worship me. That's not my intention. I don't want anybody to say, it is dead. Because of him, I'm alive. It's not me, hello. It's God. <laughs> but God used me. God used my life and mom's life and people over your life. That's why he brought you. So when God was dealing with Abraham, he was little by little, he was doing something. So that is why God is so concerned about seed. Talk to me. So with that, let me take you to this. The seed of Cain. Cain. Are you ready? So if God is so concerned about Abraham, star seed, sand seed, dust seed, so he is very, very careful. So that means he must have been doing this in the Old Testament all the way through. And that's why last week I had the privilege to present to you counterfeit lineage versus the lineage that was where God was raising Methuselah on this side and Lamech on this side where Noah is going to come in. And on the other side, you have everything that was rising through the lineage of Cain. Let me break it down today so that you can understand why is it important to raise your family well. Because the context of this, presenting this message, is so that you can raise your family well, raise your household well, so that every one of us can become a formidable force. For the kingdom of God to advance. That is the ultimate result. Ultimately what I want to see after this message is preached. That's a question I want to ask you. Sherwin. After I present all this revelation. Ultimately what is the end product? Give him a mic. Because I want to know whether you understand what I'm presenting. So that we can build together. Okay, Sherwin, at the end of this, understanding lineage, understanding why God gave Abraham and then changed his name to Abraham and then why God tested him and then showed him your generation will be dust seed, sand seed and then star seed and then the stars of heaven. Ultimately, what is the end product? I want to see. Oh. Pass down the knowledge and the wisdom to your generation that follows. Pass down the knowledge and the wisdom to the next generation that follows. Okay, are we producing coke? All of them must look like that. That's not what we are producing. They all must have bald head. All must have beard. Are, are we producing coke machine here? No. Are you following me? You don't have to preach like me, but the values and the virtues and the passion is the same. Amen. Continue. 
Anything else to add? You want the knowledge, the wisdom to continue in the next generation? The coming generation. So what must you do, Sherwin? You must pave the road for them to follow. You must pave the road for them to follow. Give him a hand. Yes, so we are paving the way. Why we need to pave the way? Because somebody else is also paving the way in the other side. Let's find out. Alright, let's look at number one, the seed of Cain. The seed of Cain produced an evil lineage that became that become the cutoff from God's generation. What did they multiply? They multiply the seed of self, sin, and the seed of Satan himself. The seed of Cain produced an evil lineage or lineage that become cut off from God's life and God's nature. And what did they multiply? Seed of self, seed of sin, a seed of Satan. And I showed you last week, they also produce a counterfeit Enoch. Did you hear that? Yes. Last week I presented to you that Cain went out from the presence of God. Chapter 3, sorry, chapter 4, <clears throat> verse 16. Can we read together? 2, 3, go. Then Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod in the east of Eden. And Cain knew his wife and conceived and bore Enoch. That's a counterfeit. So where is the real one? Chapter 5, verse 23, 24. So all the days of Enoch, let's look at verse 22. After he begot Methuselah, Enoch walked with God 300 years and had sons and daughters. And this Enoch is the original one. Are you there? So all the days of Enoch were 365 years. Enoch walked with God. And he was not. Do you understand the English? Enoch walked with God until he himself no more. How many of you want to walk with him like this? Amen. You walk with him, suddenly you are taken. No funeral. No funeral expenses. No need to leave burden for your family. Where's my husband? He's gone. Where's the body? No body. No funeral, no headache, no fighting among the family. Who's going to pay? After die also people will be fighting. Am I right now? Who's going to do the funeral? Uh, the coffin, which one? White or... A black or uh, whatever. Um, uh, and then one family member will say, it is a little bit cheap, lah. must be a bit more expensive. The other brother will say, no, too, too much. The man is already dead now. <laughs> Fighting which coffin box, which is not suitable. And then the next thing they'll be talking about, uh, this sotu is whose one? <laughs> the, you know, important question, yes. Uh, the, the, uh, uh, the will, will. I've written the will already, you know. Uh, the, the brother must get this one. Uh, you didn't write. Abe is finished. All go to the government, fight, feast fight. This is vanity. This is what continues in man's life. But if there's a proper legacy passed on, everybody will know. When the man is gone, as you said, we are creating a pathway for the intensity, the passion, the understanding to continue. The man will continue to live in the succeeding generation. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. The same intensity, the same passion, yeah. the same drive, yeah. the same thing that your father hate, you also hate. Yeah. You don't love the things that your father hate. Yeah. Something is wrong, something has gone wrong somewhere. Yeah. Your father's enemy cannot become your, your friends. Yeah. How is that possible? Yeah. Come on, church. Yeah. Talk to me. Yeah. So I'm going to show you the counterfeit seed that was being produced by, by Cain. Then you use this template to adjust your family. Amen. You adjust your family so that you can raise your family well. So that you will not be part of the contaminated generation. Amen. That's the end product. The end product of this message is so that you can raise your family well. Amen. Amen. So we're gonna you're gonna call this a family man. 
Raise our families well. Raise our children well. So that there will not be any contaminated seed in your household. Can we raise? October month is going to be a family month. Because next Sunday, we're going to celebrate God's unmerited favor in our life. For the 31 years of raising men and women. Raising us as family. Raising covenant relationship. Raising honorable sons. So this whole man is going to be a family man. And we're going to destroy the counterfeit seed. So that the counterfeit seed will not rise. There will only be pure lineage in the household of God. Amen. So let's look at this. So Cain produced a counterfeit on the other side. While on... In chapter 5, another lineage was growing that came from the life of Seth. Are you following me? Yeah. Chapter 5, verse 5. So the, all the days of Adam lived one, sorry, 930 years and he died. Seth lived 105 years and begot Enosh. Are you following? Yeah. And Enosh begot Seth. So from that family, Mahalel and all that Everyone came. Then in verse 21, you can see Enoch lived 65 years and begot Methuselah. They were not living longer and longer. No. As they grow, it gets shorter and shorter. But they were producing quality people on this side. So the first one is the seed of Cain produced an evil lineage that became a cutoff from God's life and nature. And they start to multiply seed of self, sin and Satan. The second one is, they produce a counterfeit ministry without an intimate walk with God. Look at Genesis 4, 4, 17. Just now you read, right? Cain knew his wife, conceived and bore Enoch. That's what? A counterfeit ministry without intimate walk with God. There's no intimacy. They can produce. Do you know people can produce ministries without God? You can start churches. No problem. That's why you must go to certain places like Africa to see what I'm talking about. Voodoo churches, counterfeit, producing miracles without God, using black magic, using voodoo, $100 per miracle. I'm not joking. I, they, they were driving me in Kampala. So I saw on one of the Sunday they were driving me. I said, hey, what is that? Big church, everybody queuing up. And then the pastor said, that's not a church. I said, what is that? There's a voodoo house. $100 per prophecy. Healing. On, on the spot, immediate. Immediate deliverance. Cancer can just leave your body. But cancer will catch you later. Yeah. Yeah. It's temporary only. <laughs> and people go for these kind of things. Especially in Africa. Yeah. All kinds of nonsense. Why do people gravitate to this? Because they were looking for miracle without the miracle worker. They were looking for shortcuts without going through process. Process is hard. It's difficult. Next week or following week, I'll talk, I'll, I'll take this message profiling Joseph. You will see clearly. Oh, it's going to be fun. I've got enough notes for the next four months. Profiling Joseph. And you can see how the lineage, how God protects. So the second one is what? Produce a counterfeit ministry without an intimate work with God. Let me ask you a question. Is it possible to start a church without God? Yes, yes you can. Who told you you cannot start? That's why last week I explained to you I was sent. I didn't come here fight with my pastor and start a church. I was sent by my, by my pastor. She prayed for us, prayed for me and sent me off. And I still honor her as my mentor. Though I have a father in the faith today, but God used her as a life to mentor me, to bring me to where I am today. Pastor Wong Moili. I will never forget her impartation into my life. Amen. May the Lord bless her. Bountifully. That's why I told her, she said, I'm so proud of you. I said, what you have done in my life, I cannot pay it in my lifetime. The impartation you have given to me. You know what I'm saying? So on, the 50th, on my 50th birthday, she sent a video. You heard her. 
saying about her impact over my life. Are you listening to me? Yes. So we are not counterfeit. We are proof producers carrying the lineage of what our founding fathers have imparted into our life. That's why I cannot boldly speak about her if I have fought with her and fight and come here out of bitterness start a church to prove to, prove to her that I can do better than you. You've got to be joking. This is church we are talking about. This is not some clubhouse that you can play game. Because I know the Bible well enough how the devil can hijack you. So be very careful how you raise your children. Be very, very careful. That's why this family man, this family man, whole man, make sure that you impart whatever you're receiving to your children. Tell them the importance of star seed, not a sand seed. Not a counterfeit seed. A shining star and a rising star in the making, in the house. Amen. Amen. So, based on number two point, I just ask you, Enoch found his wife and produced a child. Let me ask you a question. This is critical. Huh? Did God allow that this to happen? Yes, he did. But that child is not God's. It's not God's lineage. Yeah. Diane, was God in the picture when the, the other counterfeit Enoch was produced? Did you all see that? Yeah. Cain knew and she conceived and bore Enoch. And he built a city. Last week I explained to you. They wanted to build a city because the seed is in them. Which is contrary to what God wants to build. Do you know every one of us have, a, have an ambition in our heart. Come on, talk to me. Every one of us, we have a certain amount of ambition inside you. Only you do not know. Every one of us, including me. So then you will not say he's talking about us. I'm talking about myself, including me. I have to kill that ambition every day. Three things, write it down. Number one, to kill ambition. Let me give you a tool. Number one, you must be faithful with little that God has given to you. Number two, you must be faithful with mammon. With money. How you handle money. You must be faithful with the little that God has given to you. With the little God will give you much. Number two. You must be faithful on how you handle money. Number three. Be faithful how you handle other men's ministry. Or other men's work. Other men's feel. Other men's gifts. Other men's, you know, um, other men's labor. Be faithful in how you handle these things. Number one is what? Be faithful with the little that God has given to you. Right? Number two. Be faithful with how you handle money. Because how you handle money, I, I just explained to you. If you do not know how to handle money, money will handle you. Because money has a way of manifesting itself. I told you what. To buy the things you don't need to impress the people you don't like with the money that you don't have. Some people like to borrow money to impress people. You got to be joking. You don't borrow money to impress people. I told you in this house before, the concept of borrowing money is in, act in 2 Kings chapter 2. You borrow only for multiplication purpose. You don't borrow money to impress people. That's a wrong move. You only borrow money to multiply. Amen. I've taught this in the, in the church before. The temple is in 2 Kings chapter 2. Go and read. The widow came and said, My husband is dead and he left me with debtors. The debtors are coming here to take my son. And what did, what did, uh, what did, uh, what did the prophet say? Elisha said to her, Beg, no, no, no. Second Kings, chapter 2. He said, what do you have in your house? I only have a jar of oil. Yeah. Right? And what did the prophet say? Go and find more empty, borrow, borrow as many as 
may vessels, empty vessels, bring into the house. So he said, go and borrow. The word borrow only was asked to in that chapter for the purpose of multiplication. So she went and borrowed. Are you following me? As long as she was borrowing the vessel, there was enough oil. Supernaturally, there was oil in the house. The moment she stopped borrowing, the oil ceased. And she could pay off all the debts and deliver the son. Borrowing is for what? For multiplication. Borrowing is not to impress people. If you do that, you are bad in managing, managing your money. Money will manage you. You must manage money. Money management is very important. Amen? Number three. The seed of Cain produced an evil lineage, number one. The seed of Cain produced a counterfeit ministry. Number three, it produced a substitute pattern to rebuild a city after the name of his son. Do you know the city's name is what? After the name of the son, Enosh. Did God ask him to do this? Talk to me. Did God ask him to do this? How you see, in the lineage where Enoch, Enoch was, Enoch, the real Enoch, not the counterfeit Enoch, they were not talking about building a city. Nobody talked about building a city. But on the other side, they want to build a city and create a name after their own son. That's ambition. Self. Remember I told you, seed of self, seed of sin, and seed of Satan. Self. For example, for example, for example, eh? this one a bit sensitive. Listen carefully. Listen. You ready? Yeah, after dad and mom gone, eh? I think the children will take the church. We got no hope here. Can you entertain this kind of voice? But this is how people will entertain. Then they'll say, let's kill Eliezer. I'm not joking. <laughs> no, it's a seed. It starts in the seed. I'll show you. We got no future like here, bro. And Sharvin and, and a few of them sitting that say, far be it, it will not happen. No future here. After all, they will pass it to their biological children. What? We all spiritual children. Who came up with this idea? The enemy can plant a seed in your head. No future in this house, lah. The building also is this one, what? We are giving offering for what? Yeah. I'm not joking. I'm yeah. telling you. Yeah. You think this is a joke. Yeah. And we entertain this kind of thoughts. Yeah. I've been going to Moa 20 over years. Yeah. Did I get any, what do you call, recommendation to preach in nation? No. no. But people will be coming to you. Oh, you're very close with Papa. Huh? I want to pray for you. Why didn't you pray for me before? Why suddenly, you know, we want to pray for me? You don't understand these things. These are seed that people carry. If you entertain this, you will be taken out by this counterfeit devil that was there in the ancient of days in the book of Genesis. Right now. Ah, James, you're working for that so long. What future you have? Car also never buy. Where's your new car? The enemy can plant a seed. Marion bought a new car. She come yesterday only. You are here 20 years old. Cows haven't changed. Somebody can just throw one seat in your head and if you entertain it, you'll be part of this. Produce a substitute pattern to rebuild a city. And what was the intention? To name it after their son. Why did they do like this? Because they do not understand what God is building. Are you following me? I can, I can join this with one parable 
Remember the master of the ceremony send the servants. They kill him. Send the son. The owner of the vineyard, sorry. Send the son and they kill him. And why? Why? You, if you take that and put it here, you can see. It's the spirit that people carry. His own son of the vineyard also was killed. Because there's a spirit, a counterfeit spirit. What is that for us? We work so hard. We don't have future. And that's why that rebellious spirit inside Cain. He wants to build a city because he hated his brother Abel. And that hatred has now escalated to another level. Are you following me? That's why you cannot go out of the church not sent, you went. And you do it on your own. The spirit will follow you. Let me ask you a question. Will there be result? Oh yes. Rude. There will be result. Even better. <laughs> Even seven times more. Ten times more. Lord, Lord, we did all this in your name. Matthew chapter 7. We cast out devils in your name. We prophesied in your name. There was result, my friend. But God said, I do not know you. Depart from me, you lawless one. That means that they were practicing things without government. They were practicing what? Things without law. No government. Was that result? I just told you what. You can just take a woman and sleep with her. You can produce a child. Is that God? No. You can marry 10 women. No problem. Number four. Produce an alternative lifestyle of a polygamous relationship in marriage. You know what's polygamy, right? Verse 4. Chapter 4, verse 19. Produce what? A substitute pattern. Sorry. Produce an alternative lifestyle of a polygamous relationship in marriage. Divine institution of marriage is violated. I'm going to spend one or two minutes here. Pay attention to this. Divine marriage is violated. You all know the book of Nehemiah, right? The builder's book. You all know the book, builder's book? How many of you have studied the book of Nehemiah? Can I see your hand? If you don't, there's a small book there which I wrote some time ago. The builder. The mind of a builder. A small one. You can go and, li go and, go and look at the details in that book. And you, you will find that Nehemiah, after rebuilding, he told them, do not take, do not intermarry. You all remember or not? He said one of the, one of the instructions he gave, he said, you cannot intermarry. So I got no time to go into details on that. If I go now and get diverted, let me stay here. So he said, do not intermarry. Why? Because he wants to keep the seed pure. If you go to Dubai, do you know you cannot marry the girls in Dubai? Ah, Paul, you've been there many times. You cannot marry the girls in Dubai and try to stay there. Two things will happen. If you happen to marry, you will be exported out. I sorry, deported out. Expel. You cannot enter the country again with, uh, I am a Dubai citizen. No, 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 no. You know why? Because they don't want contamination in the land. That's how strict they are. That's why they have kept Dubai clean. You know, Dubai is a transiting city, you know. There are so many, if you go to Dubai, you can see every flight in different nations that Paul has visited before. All the small, small places, even the, even the island of Pharaoh and everywhere. Some places you have never seen in different parts of the world, you can find that the flights are going from Dubai. So it's a transiting city. You cannot go there and produce your seed. They'll expel you out straight away. That's why they kept the place clean like that. 
You work there, even 100 years you work there, you will be expelled out. You cannot claim citizenship and say, I've labored here, I want to stay there. I know someone who, who worked there for 34 years in an uh, in, uh, automobile industry from Pakistan. He was asked to go. Manager in one of the plant. He was asked to go. I asked him, you can't stay here. I said, no, this is the problem with Dubai. Even you work for 40 years, 100 years, you labor there. After that, once your permit expires, you, you are no more needed in the nation. You are asked to go. <laughs> they will squeeze your life out. They will say bye-bye to you. They are, not, they are not like obligated to keep you there. Not like Singapore. No? You know what I'm saying? You cannot get PR in Dubai. There is no such thing. You can work there. You can invest there. Bring in your money there. You can build your house there. But once finished, you are gone. <laughs> they will expel you out. Can you imagine? We are talking about the sand seed. And the dust seed have this capacity to do it. What about the child of the Most High God? Supposed to be the star seed. We allow anything can. <laughs> you don't understand what I'm saying. That's why the one that your generation is going to marry is important. Imagine, you know. Eliza, you can just marry whoever. Azrin, you're in Korea, just marry lah. <laughs> Find one handsome guy there. Korean look, bring back home. Since we don't have any stock here, bring any stock here so can. You think it's so cheap? Ah? No, there's no such thing. They like Korean, Korean K-pop and whatever not. But they're not going to marry a K-pop guy. No way. Are you hearing me? Yes. It's not that you can just pick and choose whoever I like, I just marry, you know. Yes. Because we have taught them well. Yes. We have taught our children. We keep on telling them, no, you cannot just choose whoever you like. They, we must bear witness in our spirit. Yes. You can hear from God, it's fine, but we will bear witness whether this is the one or not. Yes. Because they are going to carry the seed. Yes. Are you hearing me? Yes. They are going to carry the next seed. Yeah. Why we are particular about this? Because this, this counterfeit, they can actually produce an alternative lifestyle or polygamous relationship in marriage. Divine institution of marriage can be violated. You can see that in verse 19, chapter 4. When Lamech took for himself two wives, the name of one was Ada, the name of the second was Zillah. And see what happened. Ada bought Jabal. He was a father of those who dwell in tents and life, have livestock. You see, this is a counterfeit of what's going to happen on the other side. They had what? <laughs> livestock. And he was in tent making ministry. Tents mean what? Property. Property agent. Real estate started here. Huh? Development, that's right. We need to develop. The name, of the, they, the name of the developer is a Jabal. <laughs> Jabal Construction. Uh, just like IJM. You know, the developer. The big one. This one is Jabal. And they were starting a... You see, they were very ambitious. We need to develop. Let's grow the church. I tell you, I know how to grow this church. You want to try? Next week, let's try. Give Nasilama free. <laughs> Call all the people in the flats. <laughs> ah, no, Nasilama is considered cheap. Like. Give them nice, uh, what do you call them? Four cost meal. <laughs> Throw the money in. I tell you, you people won't have a place to sit. And then we have a hi fi set. Lucky draw. Whoever stay until I finish preaching will get this. <laughs> a car, even better. Ken, first prize. You must come to church in the next few months. Every Sunday, clock in, 9 o'clock sharp, be here. One minute delay, you'll be out, disqualified. We put there, EV car. First prize. Maybe, maybe Tesla. Park it here. 
Anyone who attend church KACC in the next six months, you must clock in at nine o'clock sharp. You might have a high chance to win a ticket to win this Tesla. I can tell you, you won't have a place to sit in, this, in the church. Saturday night people will be waiting there. <laughs> to grow church is very easy, I'm telling you. Crowd is very easy. Bring the crowd. We can create this drama. We have done before. I create this drama before until I cannot attend our church. You don't believe. It was just a hi-fi set. Not even Tesla. A hi-fi set. So I was a bit, I was getting ready to come to church. So I came in, I thought I came to a wrong building. They were all at the staircase. So I came in, most people don't know who I am. So they were there. I said, I need to go away. Tablet, you're gonna jump, you're gonna queue down. I'm not joking. Peter Chong was here at that time. Peter Chong was here. Hey, Tablet. Hey, Sire Pastor Sini. Tablet, you're gonna queue down. I cannot, I, you know, yesterday I was sharing with Timmy some of our old, day, old days and pioneering church. He said, Dad, Dad, you should have taken a video. I said, I don't have a camera in like those days. True, I want to get in then. So one guy said, hey, you can queue down. Mana beli potong jalan? Saya pastor sini lah. Hey, tamo, tamo. Then one of our usher came, hey, let him go, he's a pastor. Then they make way, you know, the staircase is jam packed, all queuing up to come up to just for high five set. High five set only, one small high five set. You know those days, you see, high five user don't know. If I say a laptop, you will know. It's just a, a small one, just for that. Was it Apeng who won it? Who won? One of them won. I'm from there. We had a Chinese group who was attending our church. We can grow the church, I'm telling you. But where are these people? They came for the miracle, but not for the miracle worker. They came because there was bread, there was wine, there was, there was healing, there was multiplication of bread. Jesus himself said, you came because of the bread or because of me? Are you following me? So it's, if we can produce this. Easy. Just read the church growing, how to grow church, how to grow uh, ministry, books. There are so many books available. You can grow. How to have a seeker friendly church. How to grow our cell groups. Very easy. There are so many people have written this kind of books available. But if it's just books, we'll only grow people in number. We won't have quality people who are totally sold out for kingdom. Amen. As I said to you, I am not frivolous, frivolous with my word. I said to you, you are part of 120. Amen. You missed the best part to say amen. amen. I said, those who are here listening to this message, you are part of this 120 that God spoke to us. Amen. You are not a frivolous company of people. You are totally sold out. You cannot be part of this counterfeit genealogy that is coming up on the other side, lineage. He said what? What was the point I gave you? Divine institution of marriage was violated because Lamech took two wives and he produced two different generations. One was Adab or Jabal, who was the father of the livestock and what? Um, which is a real estate business. Verse 21, his brother's name was Jubal, Jabal and Jubal. And he was the father of all those who played harp and fluid. And you know these are the music ministry. You can produce music musicians in the church. Jabal and Jubal ministry. How is that? I mean, nice name. Huh? Jabal and Jubal ministry. All the best musicians are there. Best guitar. These are the places where people like to go. Very skillful, you know. Why are you laughing? I'm telling you the truth. I know what the Bible is talking about. In Genesis, 
you can see the counterfeit already started there. That's why I say you can find any church. Ah, so many churches in the street. I went to meet my old friend, a Chinese guy, yesterday. Ciao. Two days ago, my Samsung pen dropped in between the seat. So I was trying to get it. Cannot find. So I said, I better go to Chow. So I went there. Chow said, Ah, Pala Muksi. Itu mokoi, ah, Mr. Surat. Tangkap itu barang. Mokoi, you know what? Devil. So, ayah, buka lah ini. So both of us were under hot sun, you know, trying to. He was opening the seat. Opened the seat. He lifted up. So I managed to take a lot of ceiling there also. I say, a blessing in disguise. Get the ceiling also out. Got my pen out. And then we were talking. I say, Bila mau datang church? Haya, church ah, banyak mau kuai lah. I say, saya punya church tak ada mau kuai lah. Banyak oh. Then he said to me, listen to this. Uh, no, uh, where our... Oh, sana ada banyak church oh. Had a banya church. Suma da mokwai I say, why you say like this? Itu a pastor, hari hari ha deb ne kirja, itu mokwai, deb ne church, member, had a banya or had a mokwai. And then he showed me a TikTok. You see, ni pastor, wow, mokwai klua, antam. I said, that's not church. Hey, you are the guy, ni macham, you've church. I said, don't have. So, sorry for those who are English speaking. He so said, this non-Christian is asking me, is this church, the pastor is casting devil every day? I said, that's not church. If the pastor have to cast the same devil in the church again and again, then something is wrong. I say, you datang sini lah. Mana ada mokwai? Yeah, ada, even your church, mana ada mokwai? He said, you have a church, but I don't know why. You told me, 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 don't say like that, lah. I said, people change already. Yeah, lah, you muksi, ah. you like to tolong people, no? Tapi, ah, orang tak ada tolong you. Even the non-Christians know. That guy know me for 30 years. After I pick up, I say, I want to pay you. Oh, tabli, tabli. Tabli angkat. Mukwai say angkat. You say some angkat. He don't want to take money from me. I say, hey, you, you work? No. About 15 minutes to open the seat. Or I say, no, I want to pay you. He say, hey, mukwai say angkat. Sini, you tabli angkat. I say, okay, okay, lah. Lain kelila. Pergi. We go yam cha lah next time. I left. Why? Because a non-Christian know they've been here. How we started, where we started, where we are today. Yes. They know this is not a counterfeit. Yes. I've been trying to invite him to come and come to church. He's a good testimony who knows where our days of humble beginning. My Peugeot 504. He is the mechanic. Madgat gang. Marian, you know him. All right, number five. Produce a counterfeit worship with contaminated sacrifice. Chapter 4, verse 20 to 21. You can read that. You can see that. Counterfeit worship, right? All the scripture references are there. Contaminated worship, contaminated sacrifice. Where did they get the livestock for? What is that for? Contaminated sacrifice. So not only they build, they become a developer to build tents, but at the same time, they also bring in contaminated sacrifice into the community. You see how they grow the church? Very easy. I know this message is very sensitive, no? but this is the truth. I know some people who might hear this message and say, wow, you think you are the only church correct? Huh? No, that's not my intention. My intention is to show you from the word how people can be hijacked. If you're not careful, this devil that we are fighting is an ancient devil that was already there in the book of Genesis. 
Remember, the first murder that took place in the Bible was in the field with two brothers. The first murder that took place in the Bible was in the field. A place of work. A place of survival. Survival of the fetus. Everybody on the push to become better. That's where jealousy is. That's where rivalry is. That's where fight is. Brother kill brother. You're supposed to be a brother's keeper, not brother's killer. So instead of you keeping the brother, you kill the brother. Jealousy in the church. When one or, one or sister rise up or brother rise up, instead of you excited and happy for them, you say, oh, he's better, huh? spiritually strong. Huh? Oh, yesterday came on in. Huh? Why people talk like this? It's the same spirit that was operating in Cain. Are you hearing me? God is not a respecter of person. It's not about how long you are in church. It's about how much of God inside you. Amen. The making of Christ inside you. So you, you, I want to encourage you, don't be afraid. You can be five years, two years, 30 years in, 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 in church. It doesn't matter how long you're attending church. It's about how much of God inside you. Amen. You can be a musician, you can be a worship leader 20 years. So what? You could be operating in a counterfeit seat. You do not know. I don't understand how can people lead worship and still be bitter about the people. But that's what happens. I do not know how people can preach and still have bitterness and unforgiveness. Hey, that's not God. Let me say this in English. You cannot preach and prophesy and lead worship with bitterness against somebody. That is a counterfeit seed of, of Cain in operation inside you. And you don't even know. May the Lord help and deliver the congregation which he purchased with his own blood. That's why I asked Charvin, what is the end product? We are paving the way for the next generation. Will you pave a way for this kind, of, this kind of seed? No. This seed was a seed of bitterness. He was angry because God accepted Abel and rejected Cain. You understand? God accepted Abel's sacrifice, but he rejected Cain. And to prove God wrong, this lineage was produced. I said to prove God wrong, this lineage was produced. That's why the first verse, 16, Cain went out. He went out from the presence of God and he started to do this. That's why in verse 14, chapter 1, sorry, chapter uh, 4, verse 14, Surely you have driven me out this day from the face of the ground. I shall be hidden from your face. I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond. This is a vagabond and a vagabond and a fugitive ministry. So I ask you a question. Can this type of counterfeit ministry grow? Can. Will they have an exuberant worship? Yes. Another critical question, huh? Can they have a counterfeit presence? In this subject, I'll show you how you can have counterfeit presence. It will shock you. Can they have counterfeit presence? For sure. Counterfeit worship? For sure. Very thin line, huh? Very thin line. We will find out all this in this teaching. How counterfeit operates. So, they will result. But this is a fugitive and vagabond ministry. And will happen that anyone who finds me will kill me. He already know. So, God said, and the Lord said to him, Therefore, whoever kills Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark on Cain, lest anyone finding him should kill him. This is a bit controversial. Huh? Why God put a mark on him? You know why? For the lineage on the other side to recognize it. Not for them. <laughs> Hello? For the lineage that is not counterfeit, that is growing from the other lineage of Seth, to know 
to know which is God, which is not. That's the purpose he put a mark there. So you who are in the spirit, you need to have discernment. The mark is not to protect them. The mark is to protect this side of the lineage. Oh, come on. The mark was placed on them for you to know which is God, which is not. How do you know? That's why I ask you a question. You know, some people say, God is everywhere. No, I defer. I don't agree to that. God is not everywhere. No, he chooses where he wants to be. Don't, don't think that God is everywhere. No, God doesn't attend every church. Okay, this is a bit more sensitive. I already told you from here, Counterfeit. Be careful. So how do you know that you're not counterfeit? Through your lifestyle. The way you live. The way you carry yourself. The way you understand. Amen? The way you produce yourself. The way you think about the next generation. The way you think about, the way you carry your, your marriage. The way you, how you serve one another. Selflessly, sacrificially, labor, lay down your life without looking for anything. No ambition in your heart. Remember the three things I said to you. That's the anchor. Number one, be faithful with little that God has given to you. Number two, be faithful with how you handle money. Number three, be faithful what God has entrusted to you, what is, belongs to others, not yours. I told you, I have, I have so many courtesy cars that Peugeot has given to me, Glen Mary, and uh, I also get courtesy car whenever my car Rosa or what. Another third party Peugeot. Every time I bring the car back, the Peugeot guys will say, so many people have taken the courtesy car, all bring back so dirty and muddy. You are the only one bring back the car as if your own car. And because of that, you know what? I always get courtesy car. <laughs> <laughs> Other people don't get it. Somehow they will, they will take that lease out and then give it to me. You know why? Because you have found a good name. You take care of other people's property as if it's yours. You don't hunt them and say, that's not mine, you know, I just use and abuse and dumb. That attitude is wrong. I sit in your car. I feel the carpet a bit like this. Andrew said, oh, that, uh, let, me, let me adjust. <laughs> but that's me. I, I just cannot stand these things, you know. Because it's, it's not OCD, okay? It's just... You just want to present him well in all things that you do because you are representing and presenting God. Remember? Everything that you do is to present and represent the Father. You, are, you don't do haphazardly. Ching chai po chai, you know, Malay say. <laughs> Anyhow, just do. No. Everything, do it consciously. Say after me. I must do everything consciously, intentionally. Intentionally, consciously do. You want to relate with people, you do it consciously. You want, to, you want to relate with someone, do it intentionally, with a purpose. Because everything we do, there is a reason behind. Are you following me? So this mark was set so that the people on the other side will know. The next one. Produce weapons for self-defense. Do you know the first war Defense material was started in Genesis. Genesis 4.22. You can read that. And Zila, the other side, they remember got two wives? One is Ada. Ada's side, they have two sons. Jabal and Jubal. <laughs> Worship ministry and estate development. Uh, what do you call that? Real estate. On this side, Zila, she bought Tubal Cain. And last week, I briefly told you, today I'll break it down. An instructor of every craftsman. What is that? Instructor of every craftsman in bronze and iron. And the sister of Tubal Cain was Nama. Or Nema. What did they produce? They produced weapons for self-defense and war. To rise above the feeling of vulnerability and have a sense of security. We need to secure ourselves. What are they fighting? Listen, there was nobody to fight. 
There was no, why are they producing weapon? Because they feel that the attack is going to come. They feel vulnerable. They feel insecure. There was, there was no other nation at that time, but they already produced weapons of war. Yesterday I was on the road. I saw the country, army was all going on side. I was thinking, the next 10 years, uh, maybe this kind of battalion will not be needed because the, the war game will change. They won't use this kind of weapons. So I was thinking all these will be obsolete, no? <laughs> right now. Joe, am I right? All these weapons that we use may not be relevant. Your father was an army man before. Some of the weapons they used then and now, some would have been obsolete. They would have upgraded things before. Things would have become better. In the next 10 years, some of the weapons they buy today may not be relevant. They may need to upgrade things. But these people were creating things because they saw there will be war. They are so futuristic, you know. Church, I want you to know what we are building. God has declared the end from the beginning. Remember two weeks ago I say, God declares the end from the beginning. You must know why are we building the church this way. You must have the understanding. If you don't have understanding, ask me. Dad, what are you building? What do you want to see in our church? How do you want us to raise our children? What will my sons and daughters be, will be contributing to this house in the next five years? In the next ten years? I'm looking forward for your boys to be involved in worship team in the days to come. Once they're grounded in the word, grounded in every area of their, of their life, oh, I'll be happy to see these boys up here. Alvin doesn't mean you can run. You should get involved. <laughs> oh, I raised the children a day. Let them do, you know. Just in case I'm thinking. So imagine this generation can produce something for the future. Even before war began, they already started weapons of war. The means that they had future in mind. That's how fast is this lineage. But what about God's lineage? We'll talk about that. The star seed. In the coming days message, you will see how the star seed is going to position themselves. It's amazing. I'm telling you this subject on, on legacy of faith is just amazing. They produce self-defense, weapons for self-defense. They rise above the feeling of vulnerability. They have a sense of security. You know. Number seven. Produce missionary to subdue the ground and override the curse. You can read that verse 22. That's missionary, yeah? Why did they produce instructor of every craftsman? Why? You know, in their mind, they're thinking to bring fruitfulness back to the ground, including genetic engineering, hybrid seed and crops. Today, if you read it today, this is what they're doing. Genetic engineering, hybrid. You see car hybrid. They're talking about human hybrid now. Come on, la church. You see uh, how the world is thinking. But church, we only talk about what? What do we understand? That's why I say the church is so far away. We have all the strategic people in the church and all that far we go is fight. Get offended. Dad is talking about me. I'm tempted to use the word S again, but I will not. I'll refrain back. I'd rather use the word foolish. A bit more refined. <laughs> a, bit, a bit more refined. But some people are so foolish. We are building a house where I want strategic men to rise in that domain where Sherwin is in. I want strategic men to rise in the banking sector. I want strategic men to rise in the, let's say, in manufacturing sector. I want strategic men to rise in media. I want strategic women to rise in that particular domain where now grace is in. Maybe media, maybe arts, maybe science and technology. When we all come together, we synergize together. And say, Dad, this is what we need to do. Let's take, let's take the community. Let's touch the community. Let's do this. 
Let's use my resources. God has blessed me so I can now resource the house. Amen. But what happens? The brother give or not? He give only I give. Or he give more. I give extra more. That's why I say the devil is literally lives inside the church. Timothy said to me yesterday, I was sharing with her experience of how we were used mightily in the area of casting devils out. I remember parking, bringing my van that was my, my friend gave to me. So I went to fetch mom in the university. Just parked the van, you know, uh, Fort Spectrum. Nice luxury van those days. My, f- my friend Sim went to <laughs> Cambodia at the time. He said, Pastor, use this van for three months, four months. I can't remember. I was using the van to go and touch people's life. You know, sometimes we fetch people. So I went to campus to meet mom. I just parked my car at the van. I wanted to ask her to come down just below her dorm. She was up there, I think, I don't know how many floors, three or four floors. Four floors. I parked my car. I just get down from the car and I, uh, the van, sorry, this woman with the, you know, the one, the shearing, the shears, the one you used to cut grass and, you know, trim, trim all the poko, you know, gardener. And she dropped this shear and she just ran, took off. She dropped and she was running. She saw me getting out of the car. I do not know her. I've never met her before. She just took off running. So imagine, I'm a total stranger. I'm not even a student chasing another woman inside the campus. <laughs> so I get down from the van. I knew in my spirit, this is the devil. I knew, I knew in my spirit. She just ran. So I chase. I say, stop. She looked like that and she kept on running. Thank God she was not carrying the knife with her and that she has with her, you know. She just dropped it and she ran, took off. So I chased, stop in the name of Jesus. I don't know whether anybody see or not. But here I was running and then she stopped. She stopped, I, I came in front of her and she started to dance like a snake. No, no music. La. She was dancing. I said, aha, this is fun. <laughs> I said, come out in the name of Jesus. Palm, she was on the floor. Then she came out. She stood up. That time mom was not there. She, me and she alone now in the campus. I said, come out in the name of Jesus. Come out. She said, I, I asked her, why did you run? I, she said, I saw fire. She said, I saw fire. The moment I saw your face, I saw fire. I said, come out in the name of Jesus. Then she said, I want to call my daughter. You must help her also. So at that time, you came. The daughter, we called the daughter. The daughter was, was, was also helping her. The daughter came in. The moment she saw me, she started dance. Another little snake inside her. I say, yeah. <laughs> come out in the name of Jesus. Tell me which devil I didn't chase. So the family was delivered. Long story short. So I was telling this to Timothy, she said, Dad, you should have taken a video. But nowadays, the devil lives inside my friend. I cannot even know. <laughs> I wish they all manifest like your days. I can cast it out. Amen. Timothy said to me, I wish they can manifest like your days. At least I'm more fun, you know. We can cast them out. Nowadays, the devil sitting inside and we don't even know there's a devil there. I said the devil has advanced itself. Nowadays in the church, they are not manifesting. They are sitting there. You preach, la. Not him, la. <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm saying? So, listen. This one, you must hear this, to bring fruitfulness back to the ground, including genetic engineering and hybrid seeds and crops. That's what they're doing out there. Number eight, produce a violent society filled with anger and revenge and murder. Verse 23, then Lamech said to his wife, 
Ada and Zila. Hear my voice. Why suddenly it manifests like this? Eh? After producing the weapons of war and all these blueprints, he said, Hear my voice. Stop going to that church. I am not joking. Listen to this. Somehow the devil will come and speak to you through your relatives. Through your mama macha. That's why they tried to do to Suse. Thank God he's still alive and still sitting here. One of his relatives came to him and said, Hey, you don't go to the church, no. He took the broom, he said, You see this or not? <laughs> I still remember he used to sweep, sweep around here. So some Catholic people from his friends or relatives say, Why are you going to the church? You don't go to the church, no. You see this broom, I'll whack you, you don't talk about my pastor. That's why he's still here. Thank God for his life. I give him a hug this morning. I said to him, your mansion in heaven will surprise many people. He doesn't understand, but still faithfully coming here, sitting here. Imagine those who understand, you should go to the next level. I pray the spirit of understanding will come upon you. I want you to pay attention to this. In a few minutes, we will close. Say, Lamak said to his wife, Ada and Zila, hear my voice. Wives of Lamak, listen to my speech. Whoa, he's a preacher now. Taking the position. For I have killed a man for wounding me. Okay? Even a young man for hurting me. What is this? So proud, you know. This is a very proud ministry. You see this? There's a spirit behind this. I have killed a man for wounding me. I have even a young man for hurting me. Is this how you want to raise your family? Talk to me. But this is how a counterfeit lineage was producing on the other side. You see, in my heart's desire, I want to be able to touch every churches around this region. But I cannot do it with my own natural way. God has to do it by the Spirit. I cannot go and say, oh, our church is better. Your church is not there. Hey, will you do that? You will get it from me. <laughs> we cannot go and say our church is better than them. No. That's not the message we preach. Yes. Let me say this again in English. The message we preach is to bring alignment and understanding the way you understand doctrine. Yes. It's not to say our church is better, their church is not there, their church is better, our church is not there. We are not here to compare yes. or compete. I say this again. We are not here to compete and compare. I know Diane's sister goes to another church. May the Lord bless you with this message. So you can share it with some of the people that are close to you. Not to go and compete. Not to go and compare. That's not our, our, our job. We are not Lamek family. Eh? Let's prove it to them. <laughs> if you do that, then you become part of this counterfeit lineage. Please. The reason why we understand doctrines well is so that we can now help others to see what they cannot see. Remember Daniel chapter 12 verse 3. Give me that on the screen. Remember this scripture. The end product of why I'm presenting this message is not to show we are better than them. Let me repeat this again. We are not here to compete or compare. Our church is better. No. The reason is for this. Those who, those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament. And those who turn many to righteousness are like the stars forever. That's a star seed. That's a seed that Abraham received in chapter 22. Are you following me? So our job is to turn many to righteousness. Teach them what, what you don't learn in Bible school. You won't learn this in Bible school. I can guarantee you. This is not theological teaching. This is revelation. Understanding from the scripture. How the devil. This is why the devil hates revelation. 
Because revelation preaching is different than just inspired preaching. It's preached by design. With clear understanding how the counterfeit grows on the other side. Moses, his father told me the other day, wow, the things that you are preaching, I mean, never heard before in Chinese churches. Never heard said. I said, take this and share it with one or two people. Help them. Then he asked me a question. Pastor, you taught us not to fish people from an aquarium. I said, I'm not asking them to, <laughs> asking you to fish people from an aquarium. Your father said this. Remember lunch before he went, went off? I mean, dinner, we had dinner with him. He said, Pastor, you taught us not to fish people from an aquarium. I said, yes, I'm not asking you to fish. I'm just asking you to help them clean up. Yeah. Our job is to go not fish. But if they come by the Spirit, God bring them here, let it be. Because God is the one who brings them. Are you following me? So it says, turn many to righteousness. Say after me, I'm a star seed. I'm a shining seed. I'm a shining star. Fixed in heaven forever. So what did they produce? They produce a violent society filled with anger and revenge and murder. You can read that in verse 23. For I have killed a man, even a young man, for hurting me. If Cain shall avenge sevenfold, Lamech seventy, seventy-sevenfold. Immediately after all this was happening, God already started to produce a new son. In your Bible, if you have a text Bible like this, you can see immediately a new son. You look at verse 25. Adam knew his wife again and she bore a son and named him Seth. And God appointed another seed. Because God knows on the other side, this seed is accelerating faster than what you can imagine. That's why I say, to grow church can, is very fast. But to make the man takes a lifetime. I said to grow church very fast. If I can make one man in my lifetime to become like me, to think like me, to talk like me, to understand things like me, I have done my job well. Amen. Paul said, I labor till Christ is formed in you. You understand? He said what? I labor until Christ is formed in you. There's a labor pain. We have to go through. That's why this kind of preaching, eh, if you don't understand, you might think it's just revelation. No. I want you to know how on the other side, things can produce result. Produce a violent society filled with anger, revenge, and murder. There's two more. I'll finish this. Then next week I'll come back and pick on the spirit of Cain. Today we're talking about the seed of Cain. Amen. Produce a nomadic lifestyle without geographical boundaries. Look at verse 20. That's what happened. He was the father of those who dwell in tents and have livestock. Why they build tents? Because they want to produce a nomadic lifestyle without ge ge geographical boundaries. The desire to conquer and dominate others. Increase territories. That's why I tell you. God didn't ask me, ask me to start a church in Puchong. God didn't ask me to start a church in Kajang, even though I know a lot of people there. God says, stay here. So, I am governed by the geographical boundaries. I cannot just now, because a lot of Movement in, uh, in, in uh, Moa, I go and start a church there. I'm governed by what the Holy Spirit is saying. Not governed by ge geographical boundaries, you know, uh, doors opening, I go here. There's a need to start an orphanage, let's start there. Then you become orphan. <laughs> then you know what? You'll write letters. If the Lord should put in your heart, Please send hundred dollars per children, because our ministry started well, but we cannot maintain. This is what the people from India do, and Pakistan do. I received so many emails from people 
sending pictures or we build a church halfway we cannot build every children need hundred dollars please pray it pray about it man of God if the Lord should put it in your heart if I do that I'll be an orphan imagine everywhere there's a need we're sending that is nomadic did God ask you to do it if God asked you to do it there will be provision every vision of God will have God's provision you don't have to go around begging asking for offering money to to maintain the ministry you will never find us doing this here because God called us to do he will provide whatever you give is bonus God asked us to buy this building we just went God asked us to buy that building we just go Whatever people give is an extra added bonus because you are part of the vision that God has called you to do. Amen. That's why we are not driven by nomadic mindset. No, we must conquer. Everywhere we must go. There's a need there, we go there. If there's a need here, we go here. That's a nomadic mindset. I want you to compare and see. You see, for the kind of capacity that Papa had her, he could have established churches in every nation he go. In fact, people want to give him everything. I mean, literally, children's education, his house in a ranch, he can stay like a king in Australia. He declined it long ago. He said, no, my primary assignment is to stay in Moa. We are not driven by somebody is calling you, we go, no. Be careful. I say be careful. That's the nomadic lifestyle without geographical boundaries. There's no boundary. There's no government. I can just go anywhere. The Lord is leading me. The Lord spoke to me. The day with, with you is over. The Lord spoke to me. Imagine, I speak to mom. Mom, the Lord spoke to me. I found a better woman than you. More sweeter, honeyer. The Lord spoke to me. The Lord, which Lord? Are you following me? Because no boundary. We are, we are talking about covenant. We are talking about laying down our life. We are talking about finishing strong. Amen. That's why Amen. Cain didn't understand. He should have rejoiced. In his heart, when God accepted Abel, right. he's my brother, man. Yeah. He's my brother. Are you following me? Yeah. He should be happy for his brother. He should rejoice. My brother's offering is accepted. Yeah. If he would have rejoiced, God would have accepted his, his, yeah. his offering. Yeah. Because he hated it. That's why they are dream killers. In my next portfolio on Joseph, you'll find out what the brothers didn't understand. He was sharing his dream. Yes, in his, in his uh, innocence and inexperience, he was sharing. Yeah, in his arrogance, he was sharing. But they didn't know the one who's dreaming is the one that's going to help them in the days ahead. None of them saw. None of them. That's why you've got to be very, very careful. This attitude can manifest in the opposite lineage. Don't be part to it. Amen? The last one is this. Produce a generation void of the Spirit of God and cast out from His presence. We can produce a generation void of the presence of God and be cast out from His presence. Cain went out from God and then, what happened? And as for Seth, to him also the son was born. And he named, look at Seth. Huh? And as for Seth, to him also a son was born. And he named Enosh. Was there another Enosh on the other side? On this side? There's no Enosh. Look at here. And as for Seth, to him also a son was born. And he named him Enosh. Then men began to call on the name of the Lord. Was there another Enosh on this side? 
There's no enosh. And that's the one they cannot produce. You know why? To call on the name of the Lord, you need conviction. You need true repentance. You need real laying down your life. You cannot produce this part. This part you cannot produce. God will not allow it. But they produce a generation void of the Spirit of God and cast out from His presence. That's why when I studied this, uh, I saw something amazing. Wow. They cannot produce another Enosh. Because when Seth gave birth to Enosh, men begin to call on the name of the Lord. I pray that you will become the desire. The, the desired generation. And this generation of Cain that carry the seed have no desire to turn to God but desire to build their own kingdom and pursue their own purpose. Continually producing counterfeits to deceive, to distract, to derail the righteous generation. I pray that this will not be part of yours. They continue to reproduce. What? A generation that will not follow what God is saying. You watch the people up. Huh? Who are truly born again. They will have government. Number one. They come under authority. Number two. They understand where they started from. They will not forget the days of their humble beginning. You watch this. Huh? This is for you to do your own checklist. The one that is truly born again. Who are not opposite on the other lineage. Number one. What is it? They will not forget the days of their humble beginning. They always remember how they started. They talk about it. They remember details of their God encounter and what God has done then and what he's doing now and what he's going to do in the future. Amen. And they always remember that. They will not violate this. They will not violate the chain of authority. They will not violate the chain of command. They are no government. <clears throat> How do you know? Look at the life of Samuel. Even though Eli's portfolio is revealed, Samuel will never speak anything against Eli. He submitted himself. That's why, that's why, you know, there's no counterfeit Samuel. There's only one Samuel. There's no counterfeit David. There's only one David. Even though David said to Solomon, you are inexperienced, you are young. I'm giving you all this blueprint, yet Solomon failed. You know why? The devil tries his level best to plant the seed of Cain inside the church today. I pray that this will not be your portion or my portion. I want you to stand up and let's pray. Let's ask the Holy Spirit to cleanse us this morning so that the end product of it is that we will become a generation that is shaped and formed by God himself. That we will not be cast out generation. We will not be a generation that will be void of the Spirit of God. I pray, Father God, that there will be no deception in our midst. There will be no distraction. There will be no derailment. That we will walk in as a generation, as a star seed. A shining star, a rising star. That will lead many others to righteousness. I want you to pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray, pray, pray. The fruits of it will be seen in our life, O oh God. Oh, riandala raba, riandala raba. Shandala raba, riandala raba, riandala raba, riandala raba. Help us, O God, in this hour to be faithful, to remain faithful, to be in your presence, not to be, not to be diverted, not to be deceived, not to be distracted, O God. Oh, Shamba, Yandaraba, help us to stay focused. Help us to stay focused on the primary assignment you have called us to do. In the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for cleansing. I pray there will be divine cleansing. Cleanses from all kinds of wrong doctrine. Cleanses from the seed of self. Cleanses from the seed of sin. Cleanses from the seed of Satan. Cleanses of God from counterfeit seed. In the name of Jesus. That we will not produce an evil lineage. And be cut off from the presence of God. We don't want to serve the substitute pattern. We don't want to build a substitute city. We want to become joint builders, co-builders together with you. Amen. We know you are building something in the house. Amen. Lord, we don't want to become a counterfeit builder. We want to join the builder. Amen. I am the master builder, say the Lord. 
I am the master builder, say the Lord. And whoever builds on it must be careful. And whatever we lay on it must be careful. We must not be careless. We must be careful in what we are building. We must consciously build, constantly build. Consciously, constantly, carefully, consistently build what God has built upon our lives. I pray and I prophesy, God, every sons and daughters will rise up. The end product of, our, of it, if we want to pave the way for the next generation. To rise, to become builders and carriers of the blueprints of heaven. Lord, that we will not be partakers of this seed of Cain. But we will become co-builders with you. And we will become the battle acts of God. Amen. The battle acts of God. And God, will, you will use us Amen. to extend and expand your, your kingdom. Amen. Use us, O oh God. Raise our family. Amen. I pray for every family this month. Especially this month, O oh God. We want to touch every family. That none of this seed of Cain Amen. will be in your house. Amen. I cancel it right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Cancel every seed of bitterness. Amen. Cancel every seed of unforgiveness. Cancel every seed of callous behavior. In the name of Jesus. I pray that you raise accurate sons. Sons that will honor you. Sons that will not go for substitute pattern. Sons that will not go for counterfeit. They will be so truthful to, to remain in truth to God. They become lovers of truth. Lovers of what is right. In the name of Jesus. I pray for every man and woman. Boys and girls. Young and old. Every marriage. Lord will carry this seed and it will not carry the opposite seed of God. They will become rising stars and a shining star and they will lead many to righteousness. I pray that this will be your portion. In Jesus mighty name and all God's people say, Amen and Amen.